Hi, this is Tammy and I do math for coffee. Today we're going to be solving systems using elimination. So we've done solving by graphing and we've done solving by substitution. This is the last of the three ways that we know how to do it. Elimination means we're going to eliminate one of the variables and then we're going to find an answer and then put it back in. What you're looking for when you solve for elimination is you want to have one of the variables that has the same coefficient except one is positive and one is negative. You have to make that happen. This, in this case, it's already there for us. So let me write this out and show you what I'm talking about. We're going to combine these terms. When I combine negative 2x and a positive 2x, you end up with a zero which means the x's are eliminated, hence solving by elimination. Now, when I combine the y's, in this case, I'm gonna end up with negative three y, and when I combine the six and the zero, I get a six. So we're gonna line these equations up on top of each other, and we are gonna vertically combine going downward. And the idea is to make sure one of them turns into a zero, because now we have a real simple equation, three y equals six, I can solve that pretty quickly in one step and I get y equals negative two. Now remember, you have two answers here. We actually have a system of equations and if you saw the graphing video, it, you think of these two lines on a graph, there's an intersection point. That intersection point has an x and a y. You only have half of the solution with the y. You now have to find the x. And we're gonna take the y and you substitute it into one of the formulas. I like this one. You get to pick which one you wanna use. I, the reason I'm picking this one is because it's got less negative stuff going on. So I copy it down and I'm gonna substitute my y right into the spot where it says y. So two x minus y equals six. We know the y is negative two, so I'm gonna replace y with negative two. Uh, a while ago, I stopped putting parentheses in here. Usually we put parentheses to set apart these negative numbers, but there's too many of my students who think multiplication when they see parentheses. So I dropped the parentheses and I have them looking for these two negatives that are written right next to each other, like that. When you see that, that changes to a plus sign. A negative negative is a plus. So I have two x plus two equals six. An easy equation to solve. I subtracted two from six and got four. Divide both sides by two and I get x equals two. So we now have our solution and we can write it as an ordered pair. x equals two y equals negative two. Also, no matter which order you solve for, make sure when you write your solution, you put the x in the first spot and the y in the second spot. All right, number two. Well, I write them down and take a look. The x's will not eliminate. The coefficients are different, but the y's will. When we combine these, they are going to eliminate. So there's my zero right there. You can only solve for one variable at a time. So the idea here is to get rid of one right off the bat. Now when we do the x's, I have negative three x combined with a positive two x, that's gonna give me negative one x. And over here on the other side where the numbers are, I have a positive seven and a negative eight, that's gonna give me a negative one. Well, that's a pretty easy equation. Negative one x equals negative one divide both sides by negative one. I'm writing it out. I would normally do that in my head and I think you probably can too. But you know, depending on the day or the time of day, it might be nice to write everything out. It's early in the morning. I'm actually on Christmas break right now. So yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> write it out. And so I end up with x equals positive one. Now you can put this back into either equation to find the y and I'm gonna use this one because it's all positive and I like positive numbers more than negative numbers. And we just run through the math and we end up with y equals negative 10. If I'm going too fast, pause, write it down on your own paper, fill in all the missing steps. So our solution here is x is one, y is negative 10. This is solving by elimination. Number three, there are different examples of things that can throw you off and I wanna show you those. The first two here were pretty basic. Here's one of the situations that can go wrong. You do not have it set up so that something just cancels itself out. I have a negative x and a positive two x. They don't have the same coefficient. I have one y and three y. They don't have the same coefficient. So in this case, what I'm gonna be looking for 
is the variable if there's any that have different signs. In the y's, both of the y's are positive, but here I have a negative x and a positive 2x. Now, if I were to just go through and multiply this first equation by 2, everything by 2, even the 19, then you're not changing the value of the equation. All the coefficients will be twice as big, but it's the, still the same equation. 2 times negative x is going to be negative 2x. See why I did that? I engineered this, so I would end up with my x's canceling out. That's why I came up with the number 2. I didn't just pull that out of the air. I had a reason to do that, and this was the reason right here. Now I've got to multiply everything by 2. So the 2 times y is 2y, and the 2 times the 19 is 38. Now we smash these together and put what we have at the bottom. All right, this is my 0. Yay! 3y and 2y is 5y, and 7 and 38 is 45. It's a real simple equation here. I just have to divide both sides by 5. I'm going to do that in my head. That's going to be 9. So we know that y equals 9 time to find the x. You get to pick either one you want, and normally I would pick the one with all positives, but there's a coefficient, which means there's going to be some division work to solve. I'm going to go with this guy, and I'm going to smash my y in right there, or substitute if you want to use the right terminology. I've been doing math too long. I don't use always the right terminology and we get negative x equals 10. All right, this is tricky. That's not our solution. We want positive x. Now, how you do that is up to you. The way I do it and the way I try to encourage my students to do this is just to flip the signs. If negative x equals positive 10, then positive x equals negative 10. The reason I like that is one, it uses your brain, it's pretty logical, and it's a lot less work. Now we have our solution. Our x is negative 10 and our y is 9. All right, let's see what else can go wrong here. Oh, cool. If you look, you have negatives and positive x's, positive y, negative y, but none of the coefficients are the same. The way you handle this is you just multiply each one times the other guy's coefficient for the one you're going for. Now, I know that seems real confusing what I just said. What I'm saying is, is I'm looking at the x's. I'm going to try to cancel the x's. I know that if I multiply this negative 2 times 5, I'm going to get a negative 10x. If I multiply 5x times 2, I'm going to get a positive 10x. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to write the answers over here. So I have 5 times negative 2x is negative 10x, plus 5 times 7y is 35y, and that equals negative 23 times 5, is negative 115. I did use a calculator for that. Let's do the 2. 2 times 5x is positive 10x. 2 times negative 6y is negative 12y. And then 2 times 0 is 0. Yay, we caught a break with that one. Let's smash these together. The negative 10x and the positive 10x is 0. The positive 35y and the negative 12y, that's going to be a positive 23y and that equals negative 115 because that's just a zero. Nothing changes here. So now divide both sides of this thing by 23. Now it should look familiar because these are the same numbers we were just working with. We end up with y equals negative 5. I have the first answer. Now you have to find the x. I'm going to use this guy because I like that zero. When zeros show up in equations, it just makes everything a little bit easier. Okay. Running that through, we know that the y equals negative 5, so I put negative 5 in for y and just did all the math. And we get x equals negative 6. The hard part about this is how to start. When you see these, you take your time with them. Let's write our solution. x is negative 6, y is negative 5. What else can go wrong with solving by elimination? Well, everything looks good as far as the x's are concerned. So let's just go ahead and smash these together and see what we end up with. Yeah. <laughs> All right, these are those special cases. This is something going wrong? Well, not really. We know that this is no solution, right? And we talked about that in the previous videos. You get no solution when you have parallel lines. If you go back and look at these equations, play around with these and solve both of these by y, you're going to see that you have the same slope but with different y-intercepts. If you get no solution, 
It isn't because you did something wrong. It's because they just slid some parallel lines at you. And what else can go wrong? Well, let's check this out. You can see what's going to happen to the X's and Y's, right? Same thing. But don't assume those are parallel lines. This is a true statement. Zero does equal zero. So when that happens, it means you have all solutions. That means these two are actually the same line. You could solve for y and look at the equations in slope intercept form and you would see that they are actually the same. What you write down is that there's infinite solutions or that the solution is all real numbers. If you want to go back and review substitution, that video is here. If you need to go back and review how to solve by graphing, that video is here as well. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about these, please leave them down in the comments and I will definitely answer. And if you are in my class, just bring them to me in class. I will see you guys next time. Bye.